Hello everybody, welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Northmen. Oh boy, alright, well, this is a, a historical action thriller from Robert Eggers. Now, when I decided to do this as a podcast, I was a little surprised that when I did a little... Um, wiki search, you know, that type thing, that some of the advertisements for this movie are toting this guy as a, uh, like some kind of, vi you know, visionary or director, and I don't know who the fuck this guy is, let's be honest. And by the way, the reason why I chose this image is because at the top it says, you can read it, this generation's gladiator. And then it says something like, you know, blah, 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 pulse pounding, days, like days is the site or whatever. I just thought it was hilarious because this movie is fucking weird. And I don't know. I looked at this guy's um, stuff and preparing to do the podcast and I don't care. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of The Witch. I was bored through the whole movie, but I could see why people like it, uh, you know, for that much. Um, Lighthouse, like, I'm just, I get it. Like, I get those movies might be good, but I can't come here and say I was, like, fucking thrilled and had a great time with this movie. Uh, uh, by seven minutes in, I'm, like, rolling my eyes, and then I'm, like, what the fuck is going on here? And by the way, I don't care if people can come here and say... This is accurate. This is so accurate. First off, every promotion for this fucking movie is bullshit. Because the main actor who's great, I love this guy, Alexander Skarsgård, is in a potato sack for the whole fucking movie. Okay? You are, uh, you know, I don't know, prime of his life. He's in great shape. And by the way, the guy's that type of guy who you don't have to be in shape, right? You don't have to do steroids. You don't have to pump up for, like for an hour each you know um every time you sh shoot a scene you know he's just got that type of body type and he's perfect for the role i love him in lots of things i think just a fan of true blood and just love his um acting in general this movie has some stars in it by the way you know uh nicole kidman i don't know who the fuck class bang is anna taylor joy who you see in the other fucking movies I guess she's kind of good, but she's horrible in this. This is like, or oh, whatever. Um, Ethan Hawke, oh. And let's not forget Bjork, because <laughs> Bjork's fucking producer, co-creator, songwriter is part of this fucking movie somehow. It's just fucking mind-boggling. And, you know, maybe there's some people really interested in here. Um, uh, whatever this fucking guy's name is, Sean, John... S-J-O-N, Icelandic poet guy. Um, he usually collaborates with the singer Bjork. You know, look. Whatever the fuck you went to do here, you fucking missed the mark. I don't care what your fucking Rotten Tomato score is and, and all that stuff. The plot is just, you know, I've seen Conan the Barbarian, okay? We've seen it. And when you turn it into an Icelandic Norse thing, I was kind of interested, like, okay, whatever. But right from the beginning, something's off about the way they're speaking. I mean, these are good actors, right? I mean, borderline great actors. Let's just give it that. Ethan Hawke, Nicole Kidman, you know. Oh, by the way. By the way, by the way. Fucking William Defoe is in this movie. So it's got to get one point or two right there. It's just, William Defoe was in this movie for like four or five minutes, I think. I just don't know. It's just insane. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a movie being touted as some classic movie of this generation. This generation's Gladiator. And it's got one or two good spots in the movie, but for the whole thing, I'm like, I don't care. I just, you know. And by the way, by the way, by the way, I was going to watch Top Gun Maverick because I need to be in a mood to watch 
real life stuff like um war movies and things that might mimic real life and there are times where i just don't feel like watching them and even though i know the movies you know got some good rap going and things like that i just don't commit to it and i was there i almost hit the button and i said oh my god i want to watch this fucking north because i was just in the lord of the rings mood i'm watching six hour fucking deep dives on you know, the Vinar, Valar, and the Anwe, and all this shit about Lord of the Rings. I just, you know, I, this movie looked good on the thing, so I, let me watch it, and I fucking kind of regret it. It's just, I don't see the, um, what's special about this movie, uh, like I said, the guy's in a potato sack, the whole fucking movie. The guy's like a, you know, um, Norse god, and... You want to put a potato sack on him? Because there's so many ridiculous things. Like, no, sorry, uh, whatever your fucking name is in the movie. Like, I don't even know his fucking name in the movie, but, oh, man. Just didn't work for me. And you got this guy running around, you know, and you're not playing fucking sleuth spy shit. Like, you're not cutting your hair and pretending you're a slave. Say, it's not happening. And, uh, you know, it, it just, it, it's not going to work. Amless. That's his name. And by the way, I really love this guy. I just, in almost everything, I watched that Tarzan movie, which is actually I thought, pretty fun. Not going to critically acclaim it, but this is weird movie. It just doesn't feel right from beginning to end. It never feels like a whole thing coming together. It's almost like um, they did a... Uh, it feels fan fiction-y, which is insane because well, this guy, Robert Eggers, is touted as, you know, it's almost like he's like the new Spielberg or something like that, and I don't give a fuck because I don't, look, The Lighthouse, probably the best out of those maybe for me, but I'm not a fan of The Witch, um, and I don't watch movies over and over like his, these movies, and that's a big deal for me, I guess. I'm sitting here doing my stupid podcast, um, and... It really comes down to, you know, oh, I watch something and it just passes through my memory. Or, man, this is, I'm watching this a couple of times a year now. Do we have to get into the, you know, fucking Die Hard and the Lethal Weapons and my Elf and, you know, my Halloween movies? Like, it, it doesn't fit in anyway. I'm not going to, you know, watch this again in that sense. You know, it, so where does this movie go wrong? I, I don't know. I, like I said, there's something off about the movie, and when you're trying to put in this North guy and avenging his father's murder, it just was like, doesn't work for me, and, and, and how it's laid out, and I don't know, music's probably good, um, that I, I noted down, like I kind of enjoyed the music here and there, like they took effort to, you know, blend the synthesizer, or whatever the fuck they're using to make it at least try to sound mysterious and Celtic or whatever you want to call it, Norse. I, I get it, and maybe you're doing a real historical thing, and like I said, people are going to come in and say, this is accurate, this is, what, this is what they do. You know, they crawl on all fours like dogs and growl to this fucking nutball in his fucking little man cave, and they get prophets and visions. I get it, you're drinking your fucking mushrooms and your fucking peyote drinks and whatever the fuck you're doing. And you're going on these vision quests. I get it. And then it's like, hey, you know, avenge me if I'm dead. I'm like, what? What? All right, well, you know where the movie's going. And by the way, there's, there's no... They think there's a twist in this movie, and it's not. <laughs> it's so obvious what's going on from maybe, you know, the way Nicole Kidman's acting or, you know, the situation you find yourself in. And you want to do a fucking young kid like, uh, you know, the Conan scene where he watches his family get killed type thing? You gotta do better, because I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You're gonna get a young actor, you get one that works for me. It doesn't feel like there's an effort of, um, you know, to, to polish this thing and make it, you know, make it at least a cohesive, fun ride. It don't feel like it. It feels... Like someone, you know, I, I once talked about like a movie, what did I watch? What was it? Like Morbius or something like that. Like someone took some, a, a, you know, not a really a good movie and tried their best to put love into it to make it a decent movie, which I like that movie. So 
I'm not going to critically acclaim it, but I can kind of see the vision that they tried to do when someone came in and said, look, let's, let's tighten this up, let's make this presentable and a decent, you know, cinematic experience. This movie doesn't do that, and it annoys me, and it just felt like, I don't, you know, you know, you should get into it, right? You know, his father's, he was a little kid, his father's killed by his fucking uncle, and mother's dragged away, and he's got to avenge his fucking father's death, but he's a child, and the child gets picked up by Vikings, and he becomes a slave on the ship, and no, you know, you only see... Some massive bloody rip scenes from him, and it's all dark most of the time. And so, you get to see one good shot of him doing his thing, and it's you know, does it sustain you through the whole movie? No, I was not like constantly on that investment through the whole movie. What the fuck is that? And I'm not really looking at um, you know, getting through it as an experience and then coming out like, wow. A lot of times, you know, I know there's a movie out there that, uh, or I'm watching a movie, and it's going to be something that I'm just not going to agree with, but, you know, they try. They, it's a good movie. It's not for me. This is a movie for me. I wanted to watch this over a fucking Top Gun. I actually was, I clicked Top Gun and went back. I was like, oh, you know what? Like I said, the Lord of the Rings medieval you know, Dungeons and Dragons guy just came out at me. He was like, I want to watch this movie. It looks fucking good. So, I don't know. I go you know, run around this movie and it's just... I laughed my ass off in a couple of parts. Now, that's not really a good thing with a movie like this. I didn't give a fuck. Like, and some of these things are just dumb. And even if it is back in the day, you know... You know, you don't sometimes do everything exact. And there's a reason why thing, things get adapted and things get changed. And, you know, is it going to work out or not? I don't know, but is this an adaption of something they wanted to keep close? It doesn't seem that way in my quick little get my notes ready, do a podcast shit, like in having the wiki up or IMBD. I don't know. And I don't see this guy as some visionary directing a movie that is um, this generation's gladiator. Gladiator is not that generation's gladiator. Like, I, I don't get it. You know, I don't fucking watch gladiator, you know, one, two, three times a year or something like that. I don't like a, you know, I guess if it was on, I'd watch it, you know, in that sense. But, man. It just seems wasted. Like, these guys got here to do a movie, and it just feels like they wasted an opportunity. And is that one of the things that's getting to me maybe these days? You know, like, I'll go back to maybe half a year or whatever, and being in such a good place just watching a fan movie about Twin Peaks, like, where does it go wrong? Where does my biases and all my stupid brain shit actually... Stop becoming a drawback. Is it a, my, the pros and cons of an approach I have or something? Where, you know, I want to watch this movie. It was in a good place. Actually chose it over Top Gun and I'm rolling my eyes and I burst out laughing at one point. Like, stop it. You know, it doesn't feel real earned and lived in. This, this girl comes into the picture all of a sudden they're in love and it's prophecy and Seers, because Bajorque's a seer in this movie. Ooh, -hoo. and yeah, it's riddled with great stars. And like, I don't know what the fuck Ethan Hawke is doing in this movie. What's he playing? Donna has the right look, but doesn't feel an earned. I watch Viking show. I mean, like, I don't get it. You know, I don't have to agree with everything, but it has to be at least uh, somewhat good quality. This doesn't feel like it, and. You know, I remember watching a movie like The Highlander and uh, the Highlander TV show and things like that. And you get this feeling that actors, even good ones, and they can't really pull off like action stunt stuff. Like he, he looks believable as a Norse guy who's flipping the fuck out, you know, doing Viking shit. I mean, you already got me, right? So how far can you pull me out of the movie and keep 
take me out of my experience. I don't know. Uh, can this be something I'm looking at and just not seeing the, what makes it so you know, riveting? This this generation's gladiator, which I find fucking hilarious. Like, when I went looking for an image, I laughed. Like there was tears coming out of my eyes. Like, and I, that's why I chose the fucking image. I just. And what's this dazed, you know, uh, thing that gave these two quotes on the fucking thing? I don't know. I didn't bother looking, but the Northmen. I mean, not captivating, just a blasé romp through the movie. And a couple of times I'm so taken out and this doesn't feel right. So the dialogue, you might get good music, a good cinematic shot, but there's a time... I'm watching this movie going, who's behind the camera? Because maybe in the process of these things and, and wanting to and being in a good place and, and choosing this over something, I felt more disappointed. Like, I don't think I, I'm i going to hate Top Gun movie, Maverick, in, in any sense of other than me saying this movie might not be for me. I'm not, I'm not a big, you know, oh, uh, action pilot, Air Force type. It just doesn't... I have no interest in it in that sense. But I, I I don't have any doubt that, you know, Tom Cruise is a fucking action star and, you know, they'll make a good movie. I'm just not gonna, it's not going to be for me. This was for me and is that part of it now? Where I'm at a point in the movie seven minutes in rolling my eyes going, what the fuck is going on? And then by 40 minutes or whatever the 40, I don't know when I marked it down here. I laughed out loud. And there's a part somewhere else. I'm tears. A tears came out of my eyes, and I'm laughing. Like you gotta be fucking kidding me. The guy's in a potato sack. The whole fucking movie. He's like a, you know, another. Uh, he's fucking amazingly in fit in that sense. Uh, like I said, he's got the body type. You don't need to be fucking built. Remember the old Tarzan TV show? Like he didn't matter. He, the guy didn't have to be ripped. You know, he looked like my fucking friend's father. And he's just, he's got ripped muscles. I mean, they tried to, but, and there were some that were, granted. And he even did a Tarzan movie, Alexander Skarsgård, which I mentioned. Look, The Northman is a epic historical action thriller film. I'm sorry, it's not. And that's the, it is touting as is Robert Eggers. And I don't get it. Written by Sean, Sean, whatever the fucking name is, Robert Eggers. Based on the legend of Amleth by Saxo Grammaticus. Uh, he was a Danish historian, theologian. Um, uh, well, you know what? Sometimes maybe just adaption should be Hollywood. It's, 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 I don't know. And you know what? Just. Maybe in that same vein of fan fiction, whatever, this is what he went for. He went for a realistic approach where you don't know what the fuck's going on. Characters don't feel right. There's something off with the words and what they're saying and what's coming off on the screen. The investment in the uh, emotions or the, the roller coaster of pacing and editing just, just doesn't work. Sometimes the actor comes on the screen. I'm going, what the fuck are they doing? Who, what director is coming here giving such input on these things? You know, it, that feeling of um, you know, the prequels in Star Wars, like, you know, someone had to really shake George Lucas and say, look, we got to redo this or something, and it wasn't done. There's Robert Eggers' reputation, this new age fucking genius. Is he getting that? Saying, you know, this is the movie I made, this is what is going to be done, and fuck it. And I'm going to get fucking heaps of praise and shit, because it's a flop, you know, whatever. And by the way, when you watch, when you watch, when you read some of these things and you get ready for what I'm doing my thing, it's got a whole thing, like, Wiki will have the marketing and the stuff. You can't critically acclaim this movie, okay? It just, you can't. I'm sorry. And maybe it's a huge oversight, it's a weakness, it's a flaw of my character as a person. I, I I don't see this. I don't see how people can come and go, you're crazy. What do you think about this part? Like, I, I don't see it happening. Do I doubt people are going to like this movie? No, I mean, 
like I said, I, I've said it. I watched fucking Green Lantern with Ryan Reynolds. Like, I don't give a fuck. I watched the movie like six times. I'll watch it again when it comes on. I, I know it's bad, and, and I don't really care. It's what I am like. What I get, how I enjoyed it. Was my, my two hours just a fun romp, or was it just The Expendables and just some 80s action movie I want to put on again? Um, you know, I even see the flaws in that. I try to. How do I, how do I recommend a movie like this? I don't know. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no breakout performance, but Ethan Hawke is this, doesn't work. Like, what happened? You're not going to get me enthralled. And Nicole Kidman, there's nothing there. Her, her, her twisting is bullshit. And uh, William Defoe, I love seeing his face, and he's awesome. And that brightened my mood, but I'm like, what the fuck is going on? The connective tissue of this fucking thing is just preposterous almost, that this Norse god of an actor guy who, like I said, you don't have to, he's just is the guy, you know? And you have him in a potato sack, and you, you bullshit everybody with your trailers and stuff, or your marketing, because there is a good scene. In this movie, but n n it never feels like that's what they made, and like it was part of it. So when when I grow up and become Conan, I'm pushing this fucking thing with muscles like uh, Mr. Olympia. I'm gonna cut my hair, brand myself, and pose as a slave. Uh, oh, and by the way, historical shit when they play their fucking hockey football game or whatever the fuck with their sticks and the ball. Fuck off. It was so stupid. I don't care how accurate it is. The guy's a fucking... He's a, you know, look at him as an actor. Look at any picture of him when he's not ready for a movie and he's just there as a normal guy. You didn't have to have this guy in shape. No, he stands out. He's fucking... I like the guy. I, I, this is not a problem here, but... What did you tell him to do? This is like a... We're gonna make this movie, and it just doesn't work for me on almost any level. Just missed opportunity, and I guess it's more me... Expecting something. Right? Hey, Joe, shut up. With Nate crawling on the floor like dogs and are growling, and this fucking crazy man is telling him prophecies and you're like oh avenge me i'm like what do you mean avenge you i'm fucking seven years old i get this this is my thing and i repeat these words but it's unbelievable i'm not engrossed i'm like why are you making this kid say things that he's clearly not ready to say just have him look at a certain way you don't have to have the kid with fucking dialogue and then you know oh you know this is a real fucking game they played well i don't care it looked dumb all for a fucking setup scene that didn't work. And doesn't work to the end. Special magical fucking sword or tied into, you know, prophecy and should have fucking wowed my wow me. I should have been fucking holy shit. Yes, a fucking Lord of the Rings type sword it has a name and has a fucking history. Yes. Uh no. No. You know, I don't know how much of the movie you got with a two-hour movie, let's just say, whatever it is, and you want to tell me the sword can't be pulled at, uh, in the daylight, only at midnight. And don't do fucking nothing with it. Maybe one part where he's obviously hitting people with the hilt, and it just uh, doesn't work for me. This movie doesn't work for me, and I wanted it to so bad. Come on, Alexander Skarsgård, Nicole Kidman, fucking Ethan Hawke, William Dafoe, whoever the fucking... Yeah, who the fuck knows? Um, Gustav Linz. I mean, right? How can the movie be go bad? Gustav Lindos in it. And he plays the son of some fucking guy who betrayed his father, his uncle. Who cares? Like, give me, get me interested. Keep me fucking immersed in this fucking Norse movie. Viking shit. It's just fucking... I don't get it. It felt like they just did some, like, uh, they made a nice trailer and then shot in the guy's backyard. But and then had to throw things together. It doesn't feel like they're invested in the scenes leading up to things. Like that's how it felt to me. 
now to me that's a bad thing, right? Uh, so I'm not, and again, I'm not going to be surprised if this movie has a following in a sense, right? I don't, I don't get, I don't think so. I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, totally surprised. But come on, Anna Taylor Joy is so fucking out of this movie. She's so not what this movie needed. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not invested from the beginning. I don't believe anything that comes out of her fucking mouth. It has to do with this movie and prophecy and love. I don't buy it. Didn't buy anything. Didn't buy Nicole Kidman as the mother and this fucking Clay's bang as Fiona and the brother. Is this fucking come on? <laughs> Stop it. You, know, you probably got amazing, great fucking actors. People could tell me, oh, he won awards, and this guy's amazing in this, and let's bring up the lighthouse, which is, like, probably the best thing, I think, Edges is done, let's say, and... Wow, I've got a... Norse Revenge Kill, you know, Revenge My Father movie that, to me, just sucks. I don't like this movie. I don't want to recommend it. I don't. I, and I wish I could sit here and pick out pieces that's, that that I could say, you know what, this is going to be for some people. They're really going to like this. It wasn't for me. Which is what, like, I think Top Gun would be for me. Like, I'm sure it's fucking... Well, he's done flops. You know, Tom Cruise is not afraid to fucking put his shit into a movie and it garbage. You know, the Mummy movie, that one fucking science fiction movie he made where he was like a clone of himself. The movie was like stupid and boring. That made that movie where they, they loop in time. No, I watched that like seven fucking times. So, you know, I get it. I guess I get it, but I'm out here to recommend The Northman. I did not have a good experience. I was not totally immersed. There's something wrong with it. Like, that's keeping me out. Like I said, come on. I was getting the Saws God. I'm a fan since True Blood. You know, I'm, I'm amazed at what he looks like and how. He fits in as the part. Um, you know, William Defoe. I smiled. I was so happy to see him. Ethan Hawke. I didn't. He felt like he was fucking a Renaissance fair. You know, I don't need Bjork to be a seer in the movie if she's a clown. Like, it's just something. I don't get it. I don't get this movie. You know, Iceland. Or, I don't know. <clears throat> just. It felt so much like trying to be Conan in the beginning. And maybe that's where the original comes from. I'm not even here to say that. Like, oh, well, this is first. This is second. No, I'm here to say I need to have fun in the movie because I'm not that hard to please. I got plenty of fucking movies out here. People are like, you're a fucking maniac. You like this piece of garbage? Yeah. And, and like my, my most viewed fucking thing I did was a shit on the Batman movie, Robert Patterson. The movie's a bore fest. I called it the board man. And it you know, it's clearly one of the most viewed things. Why don't I do everything like that? Just put sucks over everything. Because I, I don't want to. I want to have fun. I want to watch, you know, my two hours and get juiced up with creativity and start writing my D&D &D adventures. And, and so that's what my brain does. That's just what I am. I'm living in my mind and making, writing stories and getting ready for adventures when even, no one even plays. It's just what I do. It's what my brain does. And this should have been the turning point. I've been going to sleep every night, writing the Avengers in my head to tie in Middle Earth. Because I watched that, you know, halfway awful, beautiful disaster, let's call it, uh, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. And I have, I can connect my Marvel superheroes to it. Like, I, I, I do, it just doesn't end where my brain goes. This movie is not there. It's not, connect, it's not, it's spurring adventures and um, wonder at a, a world I could include into my my role playing or take elements of it and make an adventure out of it. I just didn't care and I was astounded at what I was watching sometimes. And I don't think that's a good thing in my opinion. So The Northman is a missed opportunity in my opinion, but according to critics, you know, fuck the box office. This movie really shines and pulls through on video on demand and whatever the fuck. You know what? I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. You got a list of people here who are obviously talented actors. The story you were telling was just not 
interesting enough. It wasn't done enough. Like I said, I can only say some parts of the music in a scene or two is good. You have like an artifact ancient weapon, which you make part of the adventure. Part of the fucking adventure is that you tell him a prophecy from some seer, and he's got to go on it. And it doesn't feel like it knows what it's doing. Right? And, uh, you know, we've got Igvagar Eggard Sigurdsson as the he-witch. I mean, come on, right? It's, it's got to be me. You know, we've got Halfpaw Julius Bjorsen as Thorfner Toothnasher. I bet these things are fucking real accurate. I bet these things really tie into what could be could have been happening back then. You know, but doesn't work. I didn't pull it off. I just don't feel it. You know, they've got Marie MacArthur as Hakon Iron Beard. I mean, come on. It's got to be me, right? I have to be out of my mind not to like this movie. I also feel like afterwards when I started doing my, you know, I look at my image and, you know, IMDb, whatever, I had this feeling of like a con artist or a, a farce. And I didn't get this feeling after I watched the movie. I was like, I can't see it just 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 sitting and you know keep me long enough in the movie it didn't immerse me and i didn't feel like i had a really cool experience uh whatever the northman uh you know this generation's gladiator you know what bullshit bullshit is what i could say and all this i found out afterwards i like i try to stay away from this stuff i just knew i had seen him on my radar I watch fucking Tarzan just for that reason, because he looks like he could fit the part. He just, I like him. Alexander Scars, guys, you know. Eh. <sighs> I don't know. King Harrod Fairhair of Norway. Probably all accurate shit. Uh, oh, no, that's what they do. They fuck his dogs for a segment of the fucking script. Let's write this in and... Oh no, it's accurate and let's let's put him in a potato sack and cut his hair and pretend that he's not some god of Norse men. You know, hunch him over or something like whatever. And how oh, I'm gonna play I'm gonna fucking cause terror on this farm. Uh, I don't know. I'm supposed to believe that the guy overthrew his father. I don't know, king region of the area, whatever the fuck it is. I just think, you know, uh, whatever. And then he's like, brother takes over, kills him, and I'm going to revenge you, father. And, you know, he's rowing the boat. He's older. He's looking upset at something, you know, of course. And he finds out that it's, uh, the person who, um, his uncle who killed his father and took his mom is now a sheep farmer that someone overthrew him and right away you can almost feel the air let out of the movie like cause my brain was going okay so cause it didn't even look like a kingdom it's only like this isn't like a king of Gondor it's like you know the viking show where you have villages or little communities that go off and ransack and bring back slaves and the god of erections that was my favorite line by the way Fuck you, Christian motherfuckers. Fuck off. Ha ha. This fucking movie nails you, boy. You know, because, you know. The one guy, I, you know, one of the parts that made me laugh was, um, some bullshit's going on, because it's just horrible acting in this movie, and the guy's like, um, uh, you know, <laughs> the guy's like, uh, you know, you fucking Christian assholes, you know, you worship a dead guy on a fucking, on a, on a cross. And it always comes back to me that, like, people, what was it, George Collin, probably? And he's like, you know, yeah, you know, you know what's a good tribute to show our, you know, devotion and whatever? Let's wear an image of the, to Jesus on a cross, nailed to it. And just walk around with it on chains, like, yeah. You know, Jesus comes back, like, what the fuck are you wearing this fucking thing on my, you know, like, it's, it killed me. Oh, but it's for you, you, you did this for, it's just, and they make a point of it, movie. I just started fucking laughing, like, you know. 
And then uh, the Christians, one of the Christians might have been like, or, or say he said that to him, like, you're God of erection. <laughs> so I was like, oh, God. The Viking show is better, right? And even though I only got three seasons in today, I don't think I'm, I can ever get back to finishing it because there's so much shit to watch. And then I used this and I threw it in there. Anyway, I'm going to end this because this is fucking becoming a rant. I can, I'm a little disappointed in Northland. You can get it. You want to watch it? Watch it. Go ahead. You tell me how fucking silly I am, how off the mark I am, but I was fucking not an enjoyable experience, and that's just it for me. It's not going to be watched again in a fun way, you know, in that sense, and fucking Robert Eggers. This movie is this generation's gladiator. I find all your promotion was bullshit. Your critical fucking claim that you're trying to put over as this movie, you know, no, it's not going to be the thing and John Carpenter, dude, it flops at the movie theater and becomes a cult classic. There's no fucking way. So I guess I'll end that here. The Northman, watch it at your own risk, I guess. Um, I don't know. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we had the holidays pass, and it could be a tough time for people, so I hope you're doing well. Um, breathe. This some of my best advice is just to take that time to breathe. Longer out than in. <laughs> I had to do that a couple times through the movie. Anyway, the Northman March it. I'll talk to everybody next time. Take care, everybody.